hey there everyone how's it going tarun here so i hope you have already watched the part 1 of this where we already discussed about encryption and decryption and two uh, types of encryption algorithms and examples of those and we even saw the diagrams of uh, how it works now we will move on with the article and go ahead with it so what is this end to end encryption uh, ba- in backup that whatsapp is speaking about so there are two ways in which whatsapp is proposing that a user will be able to encrypt his data so say the user has the whatsapp application and there are his messages there and once he wants to backup all those messages the messages if they are in unencrypted format which is if they are in plain text itself then anyone who accesses that messages uh, or that backup will be able to read all those messages right so it will be a great violation of the user's privacy so for that what can the user do um maybe he can store it somewhere securely in his uh, google drive or his uh, dropbox or some sort of uh, cloud storage or pen drive so anyone who gets access to those uh, cloud storage or the, those pen drive will be able to access these uh, backups and they'll be able to read the messages so now what whatsapp is bringing in is end to end encrypted backups so there are two ways in which they are providing this mechanism to the user let's go through one by one so the first way is a simple way where the user enables this end to end encrypted backup the client generates the encryption key so if you remember in the previous example we spoke about this in uh, this symmetric key which both the uh, client and server uses for encryption and decryption right so here the user generates this encryption key and the user he saves the uh, 64 digit representation of the key now the client generates the backup and encrypts it using the key say if you have 100 messages all these 100 messages are backed up in plain text and using this particular symmetric key they are encrypted this encrypted backup is uploaded to the cloud a google cloud or i cloud right or any sort of uh, backup mechanism now even though anyone ha- gets access to your google cloud or your drive or your pen drive they will not be able to read the messages because even if they are able to open the file it will look uh, like full of mumbo jumbo right because they do not have access to your key where is that key present that key is present with the uh, mobile app client it is in the uh, back end of your application mobile application how smart is that so now what if you want to read the backup okay so when you want to read this backup from the cloud the user will have to enter the 64 digit key don't worry whatsapp will now is not going to ask you to memorize all the 64 digits there will be some sort of mechanism easier mechanism for that then what happens is using this key uh, i mean first the client actually fetches the data from the cloud right the backup the end to end encrypted backup is retrieved from the cloud and then if the key is valid the client decrypts the backup using the key and restores the user's chat history so this is the first flow where the user uses a self generated key encrypts it and saves the backup anywhere retrieves the backup decrypts it using the key and is able to restore their own backup so this is what end to end encrypted backup using a 64 digit encryption key is the second mechanism that you need to know here is end to end encrypted backup with user password now how does this work so the user has to first enable the end to end encrypted backup the client generates the encrypted key and uh, the user uh, sorry the client generates the encryption key and the user enters a password so the encryption key is stored in the hsm backed backup key vault and secured by a user password now what is this hsm backed backup key vault so hsm stands for hardware security module so in simple words what a hardware security module is uh, it is able to handle all the cryptographic functions efficiently it's a circuit like uh, uh, what is it you can call it as a circuit it's a circuit and it it is able to 
handle all the cryptographic functions like say encryption decryption the algorithms and safety against uh, tampering the particular device etc right so it is very apt to store these kind of uh, keys and uh, stuff right so this encryption key is stored in these hsm backed backup key vault and is secured by a user password so there is this vault which needs the user's password to be accessed to and this uh, encryption key is placed inside that vault right so the, now the encryption key is not stored with the uh, client actually so the client creates a backup and encrypts it using the key and the end to end encrypted backup is uploaded to the cloud right so here now there is an extra component that is involved which is our uh, key vault the vault is not present on the phone it is present on the whatsapp servers now say the user wants to get their uh, backup from the cloud so user has to enter the password then whatsapp client takes it to the server to the key vault and the vault validates the password and then it returns the key so this makes sure that the user need not maintain the key the user need not have the key on his phone right the key can be placed somewhere in some other vault and the user just has to provide the password to open that vault in order to get the key now once the key has been obtained by the user the end to end backup is retrieved from the cloud and the client decrypts the backup using the key and restores the user's chat history so these are the two different flows where the end to end encrypted backup uh, comes in one is where the user maintains his own uh, digital uh, key encryption key and he uh, encrypts it and stores it in some uh, form of storage retrieves the storage and decrypts it the second form is he has to just remember his password the key itself will be stored in a different key vault right and in order to access that vault the user has to provide his own password so this is the uh, thing and we are about to go deeper into uh, this thing into the the white paper itself the white paper is uh, really interesting here and gives us more insights into this process as to how this actually works so going through it quickly um, so whatsapp says that since 2016 all personal messages calls video chats and media sent on whatsapp have been end to end encrypted right this means that no one except the user not even whatsapp can access them but when it was coming to uh, backup it was not this way right so whatsapp's backup management relies on mobile device cloud partners such as apple and cloud to store backups of the whatsapp data prior to the introduction of end to end encrypted backups backups stored on apple icloud and google drive were not protected by whatsapp's end to end encryption now we are offering the ability to secure your backups with end to end encryption before they are uploaded to these cloud services that's what we saw right so with the introduction to this uh, end to end encrypted backups as we saw whatsapp has created a hardware security module based backup key vault to securely store per user encryption keys for user backups in a tamper resistant storage thus ensuring stronger security of users message history this is what they claim so you might ask um, so there is this vault uh, where we have stored the uh, users encryption key right and it needs a uh, password in order to access that encryption key now the doubt might arise that what if there is some other attacker who is trying some uh, some sort of brute force attack in order to get into the vault so of course it's a vault and uh, say if you have uh, four digit numbers number as a pin what if the attacker tries to try all combinations of four digit numbers in order to open the vault right it is very much possible that is where whatsapp brings another rule that there are only certain number of password verification attempts and in case this number of password verification attempt increases by certain threshold the failure rate increases by certain threshold 
the the user will not be able to access the uh, key forever right uh, so this is one sort of uh, dangerous but a secure mechanism which is provided by whatsapp now now going back to the hsm based backup key vault as a safe deposit box one thing that i want to highlight here is since you are already a pro in, uh, in understanding encryption and decryption uh, concepts now you will you would have understood that since we are encrypting with it with the user's password okay which will give us a symmetric key you will encrypt and keep it inside that vault as long as user doesn't share his password with anyone not even whatsapp will be able to open that vault isn't it so that is what you need to understand so that's the kind of power that cryptography gives us now coming to the system overview now how does all of this look look like so what does the architecture look like so there are clients right clients are the application whatsapp application and through authentication through the client server authentication protocol the client communicates with the whatsapp's front end service they call that uh, chat d okay c h a t d and this whatsapp front end service connects to it back connects to its back end which is a hardware security module based backup key vault service and whatsapp uh, doesn't i mean whatsapp's servers do not connect with uh, the google drive or some sort of drive uh, cloud drive storage the client has to communicate with the uh, google drive or the cloud storage so this is how the complete architecture looks like so the hardware secure module based backup key vault service is geographically geographically distributed across multiple data centers allowing it to continue operating in the event of data center outage right so say you have uh, lost your phone unfortunately and you want to install whatsapp on your new phone you had enabled this end to end encryption um, or encrypted backup right and when you install the app you find that whatsapp servers are down so you won't be able to uh, go ahead with your uh, setup you won't be able to go ahead with retrieving your backup all of your backup is lost right so this is where as a proper site reliability engineers um, what people usually uh, focus on is to provide high availability first of all and to maintain backups right to ma maintain disaster recoveries so in case uh, that's what we had a previous episode where i spoke about uh, site reliability engineering so site reliability site reliability engineers do not hope for uh, disasters to happen but they are always ready for it right so in similar way here also in case of uh, whatsapp what they are doing is this vault that they are having they have a fleet of vault they have around five different vaults at five different data centers right so even if a couple of them go down they say that they are able to um, maintain this majority consensus where uh, you will be able to retrieve your key successfully right so that's where they are bringing in the ha the high availability that's also a point to highlight now you may ask see there is the client there is vault's front end and there is vault which is uh, the back end whatsapp's front end and there is a back end where is vault so uh, i told you that we uh, send the key from the uh, user's uh, client mobile phone to the vault in order to lock it inside the vault you may ask what if some kind of attacker um, sniffs between the client and the whatsapp's front end and he starts using that uh, key so that is where the security between the client and whatsapp's front end come right so the clients use the something known as noise pipes from a noise protocol framework for long running interactive connections so this is another interesting theory which we will come up in the future episodes so for now all you need to know is it is highly secure and encrypted layer uh, of connection that is being formed between the client and the whatsapp's front end where the client is able to send the uh, key securely 
from the client uh, mobile application to the WhatsApp's front end, which again securely stores it into the vault. Now coming to the backup uh, generation and the backup key registration. So what happens is WhatsApp uses this opaque protocol, OPA QUE, opaque protocol in order to uh, conduct this, these mechanisms safely. So what you need to essentially know about this opaque protocol is it allows this way of where the client uses a password in order to secure this encryption key which is used to encrypt the data right and what happens is even though the client uses the uh, his own password to encrypt the encryption key and stores it in the uh, vault the opaque protocol ensures that whatsapp does not come to know about the user's password right if they get to know about the user's password, they will be easily able to unlock the vault and uh, get your encryption key, isn't it? The OPEC protocol ensures that no one gets access to the uh, user's uh, password. Now, what about the backup key vault validation, right? So the first step the client performs when interacting with the HSM based backup key vault is vault validation. Now say you have your uh, WhatsApp application. Now someone messed up the app in such a way that or someone placed a proxy in between you and WhatsApp in such a way that you are not connecting to the actual WhatsApp servers but you are connecting to some dummy server set up by a hacker impersonating WhatsApp. So he's telling that these are the WhatsApp servers you need to connect to and your app is actually connecting to that. And there that particular uh, server is behaving in such a way that it is asking for your password uh, as if it is a WhatsApp account, a WhatsApp server. And then what will your app think? Okay, this should be WhatsApp server mostly and it will give away the password. What will the attacker do? He will take that password he will make an actual request to uh, WhatsApp server and get your data, right? This is very much possible. So what is the important point here? The client application needs to exactly know and needs to be confident that it is indeed connecting only to the WhatsApp servers and not any other server impersonating WhatsApp. How can, how is that possible, right? Here comes the asymmetric encryption concepts which we saw in the previous episode so the client relies on the public key that is associated with a specific hsm based backup key vault fleet which is hard coded into the client so the client already has a public key right using the public key i told you the concept of digital signatures right so using the private key the vault fleet will send a message and this client will decrypt it using the public key in order to verify that yes it is the actual vault server which is communicating with it right so this prevents man in the middle type of attacks it's very important right now coming to the uh, next part like in detail as to what actually happens we actually went through this so WhatsApp application asks the user to enter the password and using this opaque protocol, uh, the user, what happens is the server actually sends back a, um, or say a, rand, a random number which will be generated. Because here they are also thinking about another kind of attack which is known as replay attack. Now what is a replay attack? I'll tell you. So say consider there is a user, okay? The user has negotiated some uh, thing with the server and the server sends back the response now the user sends this uh, encrypted uh, request right what this attacker does is he captures that encrypted request and he resends that encrypted request to the server now the server might think like if it is not secured enough the server might start thinking that 
this attacker is the actual user and it might give back the response right so in order to prevent this replay attack why do we call it replay because the user has already sent back the uh, sent the request to the server the attacker is again sending another request right so this is replay attack in order to prevent this the server again uh, when sending back a response it sends something known as a nonce uh, which is actually you can consider it as a random number and since the client is the only one who will be able to decrypt this message from the server what the client will do is it will take that secret digit sent by the server and it will encrypt and send back that secret message the next time the client wants to communicate with the server in this way even though the server receives some sort of message from anyone um, which is similar to the request that the client sent earlier the server will look for the secret number it sent recently and if it is not able to verify that with its secret number then it will just discard it right how um, how uh, smart uh, cryptographical algorithms are right so this replay attacks are also taken care of in this uh, sort of handshake that is happening so during the registration process the user encrypts the key and uh, encrypts the encryption key with his uh, particular username password uh, symmetric key and he sends it along the buffer to the server and the registration process is complete so there is client using his password he sends the registration request the server sends the registration response and the client does a registration upload where he uploads his uh, keys now what about key retrieval how does that work so client again has its password so client does an credential request and the server gives back a credential response and then the client gives a credential finalization now what are the steps in detail that go into this particular thing is so the client calls uh, the opaque library method that provides the password and obtains the buffer credential request the client then sends this credential request to the server which in turn decrements the attempt count so we also looked into this where the whatsapp server will only allow certain number of uh, uh, password attempts right so this is where it initially decrements the attempts now the client provides its uh, password and then when uh, the call returns the shared symmetric key and the symmetric key uh, opaque k and a buffer credential finalization right then the client sends this credential finalization to the server which returns the encrypted key and the key nonce now both are encrypted with this shared key and the uh, rk nonce so which is a nonce for unwrapping them so what happens is the client then unwraps this encrypted key okay using the aes gcm cipher suite and finally the client unwraps this encrypted key with his opaque key to get the key so there is this encrypted key and you remember this username password which gives the uh, client the symmetric key he encrypts that to get the actual key now the client has the actual encryption key with, using which he can decrypt the backup with so to put this in uh, flow in simple words the client uses his username and password and he authenticates with the server the server sends back the encrypted key in an encryption format along with this uh, nonce that we were speaking about and the client uses his encryption key his symmetric key in order to decrypt this encryption key and he gets the encryption key k and all of this process is backed by the opaque protocol now the client has the key k and he is able to decrypt the backup with so this was a pretty much in depth dive about uh, whatsapp's end to end encryption where we learned about a lot of stuff right from uh, system architecture to how they manage uh, ha to how they manage secure uh, encrypted cryptographic uh, communications So please let me know how how you liked it and how we can improve it in the future episodes. 
thank you so much for listening i hope this uh, helped a lot please check out the official uh, article also this is on engineering.fb.com so it is ba- it is uh, about whatsapp's end to end encrypted backups see you guys in the future episodes with uh, similar uh, kind of uh, topics interesting topics where we deep dive into uh, articles thank you so much for joining in this episode see you guys in the next episode thank you bye